really a story that is breaking ground today. Let's now take a further step in the conversation and speak to an expert in the field. On the line we have Khalid Galant, the CEO of the South African Institute for Drug-Free Sports. Good evening, um, sir, and welcome to Sports on Full View. Uh, good evening. Thank you for joining us. Okay, so now the first um, discussion I'd like to have with you is the fact that Apiwe claims that he passed a drug test two weeks before the failed drug test with the national team. Now, if this is true, what is it that could have happened between these two tests that could have actually resulted in where we are now? <laughs> That's a bit difficult for me to comment. Uh, uh, you know, the, the case is now in the process. Uh, and it would be best left for the athlete to explain uh, the reasons why he tested positive uh, on the subsequent test. Okay, so now in terms of the testing process, we know that he had his A sample test, which was done, which came back positive for banned substances, and then we went into the B sample. What is, it, what is if any, the difference between the two tests that are conducted? Well, the, the B sample is a confirmation of uh, uh, whatever result uh, came out of the A sample. And to, to make it, uh, to understand it here, when the athlete passes the sample in a dopamine control test, it gives us a sample of uh, approximately 90 milliliters. And that 90 milliliters, uh, 60 of it goes into the A sample and 50 into the B sample. So um, both the, the samples of the A and the B is, is the same. It's taken at the same time, so it's not taken at different times. Uh, so sports is the only um, like uh, field where if one tests positive uh, for a substance uh, that is required or that not required, the athlete has the right to have a confirmatory sample that is uh, sealed separately, which is the B sample. Okay, now let's speak more about the sources of where these um, substances can be found. We've seen in the cases of our of cyclist Contador as well as boxer Alvarez where they blamed contaminated meat for this. So what are the possible sources of these substances? Uh, again, he tested positive for um, a few uh, anabolic steroids. Uh, and again, it's, uh, it's not free of me to speculate on the sources or how uh, the act came about uh, to have anabolic steroids um, in the sample. It's best left to the athlete when if he decides to challenge uh, the charge, uh, and that will be part of his defense, and uh, we will uh, know about it in that, uh, uh, when that time comes. Okay, so now, Khalid, you've mentioned that sports is the one place where we could actually test the A sample as well as the B sample. What is the likelihood of, though, the results coming back completely different in terms of these two samples? As you've mentioned, they are taken on the same day. Uh, well, if the B sample comes back and it doesn't confirm the A sample, we do not charge uh, the athlete with the doping offense. And no offense is, uh, um, no charge is filed because obviously there's a discrepancy. Um, and, uh, you know, it just, the case is closed at that point. Now, these substances that were found in the case of Apiwe, how would you say they would aid an athlete's performance? Uh, in a general sense, um, I'm not specific to the uh, Apiwe case, uh, but it is positive for anabolic steroids, and anabolic steroids is specifically banned in sports for its performance and enhancing uh, effect, uh, which specifically uh, relates to muscle building, increasing your bulk and uh, the lean muscle mass. Um, also, that um, uh, by increasing the lean muscle mass, it also speeds up your muscle development and it can help in uh, injury uh, recovery, shortening injury recovery time. In this particular situation where we are now, what is the minimum sentence that could actually be passed with regards to APIWE? Okay, with the sanctions um, that uh, uh, happens in these cases, it's a specific framework uh, that we have to reference. It's called the World Anti-Doping Code. Uh, and the code's framework for anabolic steroids is a minimum of four years. Is that minimum of four years? years. Uh, yeah. Sorry to cut you there, Khalid. Is it minimum of four years standard, irrespective of any mitigating um, circumstances which a peer may bring forward in his defense? Well, that's, uh, again, if the athlete decides to challenge uh, the charge, uh, he then can bring forward, he can, um, there's different options the way one can challenge the charge. You can plead guilty, uh, but say I want to 
I feel guilty to the offense, but I, I would like to have a, re- a reduction in my sentence. And these are the mitigating circumstances that we put forward. And the uh, panel that will be adjudicating that will then take that into consideration uh, with a, a reduction is warranted within the framework of the World Bank Serving Code. Okay, so can we just go through the different options that are available for him at this particular moment in time? You've mentioned that he could plead um, guilty or not guilty, but how does the process work? He's now been charged. What are the next steps? Uh, well, the next step uh, uh, for him and his uh, legal counsel to decide uh, whether they will accept the charge or whether they will contest the, ch- the charge. And again, if they are going to contest it again, uh, what are they going to contest? And they will start gathering evidence to prove their defense. And if they accept the charge, would that then lead to the automatic minimum four-year sentence? Uh, only if he's found guilty. Right now, he's what we call under a provisional suspension, uh, so he still can't compete. And should he be found guilty, and let's say they hand out a four-year sentence, uh, they will credit him for the period he served in the provisional suspension. Khalid, thank you so much for your time this evening and for just helping us as um, the nation to understand more what is happening in these present circumstances. Thank you.